This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Wednesday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Here's what's making headlines on this June 17th. Yeah, 2020 will be one for the record books for sure. A night of violence in the Circle City this morning. Metro police responding to multiple shootings across the city, at least one of them deadly. The latest on the investigation. Plus, the family of Dre John Reed is suing IMPD and the city of Indianapolis and why they say there's a lack of answers in the investigation. And the need for blood donations remains high as we deal with the coronavirus pandemic. Working for you this morning, we're taking a look at how the Red Cross is making sure those donations and donors are kept safe. Five o'clock here on your Wednesday morning. We want to get a check of our Storm Team 6 forecast. That's right, Todd Clausen is standing by from home right now. Todd, what can we expect on this Wednesday? You know, more of the same. We, we haven't really seen the weather pattern change all that much since uh, earlier in the week. We've had pleasant overnights, nice seasonable afternoons with lots of sunshine, and we'll continue that trend here uh, for the day today. So what do you need to grab before you go? Well, whatever you had yesterday, just take it along with you for the ride uh, for the day today. You'll need the sunglasses, the sunscreen, of course, and uh, drink plenty of water as you are going to be out and about, especially even with this low humidity that we have. You don't really realize uh, how much you're sweating, and you can get dehydrated pretty quickly, so make sure you drink uh, water throughout the day. Temperatures right now are in the 50s and 60s. A great morning for an outdoor walk or run if you choose to do so. 66 in Indy, 57 right now in Bloomington. We'll slide to the north into some of your hometowns. Logansport, 61. Marion at 61 and Anderson currently at 59. We're mainly clear right now. A few of these clouds that you see off to our east, they'll try to sneak in here at times throughout the day. So there'll be times I think where it's partly cloudy, but overall, it's a very, very nice day. Sunny skies this morning, 81 already by the noon hour on the way up to 85 degrees this afternoon. Again, as the skies turn partly cloudy, but no threat of any rainfall in the forecast for the day today. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads on this Wednesday. This is an issue you're monitoring right now as you're heading into downtown I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. We have a crash cleanup still underway from the overnight hours. It's blocking the right lane of I-65 northbound as you're heading right into the North Split, continuing on northbound I-65. If you look closely, you can see people walking in the shoulder of the road. So this is a spot you'll really want to take it slow this morning. Give police plenty of space to do this investigation. The left lane remains open, so just move slowly through that area once you get off the ramps at the south split and you continue on northbound I-65. Everything opens back up, so that is good news. We'll continue to keep an eye on this spot and keep you updated throughout the morning. A violent night in Indianapolis after two people were killed and five others hurt in multiple shootings across the city. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning from the scene of one of the shootings. And Kelsey, is there still police activity where you are? Yeah, Meredith, there still is several police officers here on Bolton Avenue. You can see them behind me. They've just turned off their lights, but we're on Bolton Avenue near East 46th Street in Arlington Avenue, where IMPD says when they arrived on scene just after one this morning, they found a vehicle crashed into trees. They say two men were shot inside that car on the northeast side. Again, that's around 120 this morning. Police also found a blood trail and believe a third person was in the car. SWAT teams and K-9 units are out looking now for that third person. We've seen their flash lights kind of go through these trees, air, this tree area, and IMPD officers say that Indianapolis is on track to have a record number of homicides this year in 2020. People obviously can't get along, so if we can't get along, let's just shoot each other because that seems to be the proper thing to do now uh, because we have zero sense of having any ability whatsoever to communicate and to deal with any anger issues um, other than taking a weapon out and, and pulling the trigger. On the northwest side, police say three people were shot at a party just before one early this morning. It happened at a home on Luxembourg Circle West near the I-65 38th Street interchange. A man and a woman were taken to the hospital in stable condition, and another victim from that shooting, a man, was located at McDonald's on 38th Street. He is in critical condition, and police are trying to figure out what led up to that shooting. Now, in a separate shooting, another victim was taken to the hospital in serious condition, and we just learned in the last 10 minutes that 
officers, IMPD officers on the scene of another shooting on English Avenue. That victim also in critical condition. As always, if you have any information on any of these shootings, then IMPD wants to hear from you. You can always, of course, call anonymously at Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you for that update. It is 5.05. The family of the man who was shot and killed by an IMPD officer is now suing the police department and the city. On Tuesday, Dre John Reed's family filed a lawsuit against IMPD and the city of Indianapolis for excessive force and wrongful death. Police say that Reed was killed in an exchange of gunfire with an officer while trying to run away after a car chase he led back on May 6th. The lawsuit claims that the officer, DeJore Mercer, never commanded Reed to drop the weapon or warn Reed that he was going to shoot. Attorneys for the family say they are also dealing with a lack of answers in the investigation. The longer that we go without answers, the longer that we go without an autopsy report, the longer that we go without access to any weapons, any ballistics reports, um, or any evidence, is more time that the evidence can be diluted and the evidence can be manipulated. We asked the city and city attorneys when that information will be released. The Office of Corpor Corporation Counsel said it does not comment on litigation. The coroner's office told us that Reed's autopsy is now in the hands of the special prosecutor who has talked with the family about the autopsy and why it has not been released yet. You can read more information about the lawsuit and the investigation online right now. Just go to the IndyChannel.com. Turning now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic, the Indiana State Department of Health has 14 new reported coronavirus deaths. So far, 2,265 Hoosiers have died from the virus. 440 new cases of COVID-19 were also confirmed. Since the pandemic began, 40,786 people in Indiana have been diagnosed with the virus. More than 363,000 Hoosiers have been tested. 11.2% of them tested positive for COVID-19. And some potential good news out of the UK this morning. A new drug is being touted as a possible treatment for COVID-19. The widely available available and affordable dexamethasone could help some of the sickest coronavirus patients. Researchers released the findings of a trial on Tuesday, but they have not been published in a medical journal yet. Scientists found a 10 day regimen of the drug reduced the risk of death by one third for patients on a ventilator, but it did not have the same positive effects on COVID patients who were not on ventilators or on oxygen. And starting this week, the Red Cross will be providing COVID-19 antibody testing on all blood platelet and plasma donations, our Alyssa Donovan explains. Whenever you donate blood, plasma, or platelets to the Red Cross, your donation is tested for certain infectious diseases and viruses. And now COVID-19 is part of that list. There's already a list of things um, that we test for whenever you donate blood. This will be as part of that process. The antibody testing is a way for the Red Cross to work with state and national health organizations to help better understand the spread of COVID-19 and for people within our community to learn more about their current health. That will help them know if they have uh, been exposed to the virus. And right now there is a blood shortage. The Red Cross needs donors. The blood supply has been on a bit of a roller coaster since the beginning of the pandemic. Cancellations of blood drives caused blood supply to drop quickly. Initially, the lack of elective surgeries helped keep things balanced. Uh, but now the hospitals are adding back in elective surgeries and non-urgent care. The need for blood is going up very quickly. In the last few weeks, the Red Cross has seen an increase of blood demand of about 30%, which is why they're encouraging people to donate, but only if they're feeling well enough to do so. If you suspect you might have COVID-19, you know, that's something you should go to your doctor for, not, not the Red Cross. Within seven to 10 days, you'll have access to your antibody results via the donor app or online through your donor account. For details on where you can donate blood around the Indianapolis area, we have a full list on our website, theindychannel.com. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you here at 509. While many communities are canceling 4th of July fireworks out of safety concerns due to COVID-19, Carmel's will go on with triple the fun. The city says to reduce crowd sizes and keep people closer to home, they will bring you three fireworks displays at the same time on various sides of town. Fireworks will be set off on the east, central, and west side starting at 9.45 p.m. on July 4th. While the fireworks will take place, Carmel Fest 
draft and the parade are canceled this year. All right, I'll have to get the uh, Thunder shirt ready for my dog <laughs> yes. then, Todd, because Gypsy's like, ooh, oh, she's no. not good with fireworks in general, but three times the fireworks, ooh, it's going to be a rough, yeah. rough night at our house. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be coming from all directions. You're either going to be in your closet or under the bed, so uh, you'll have to prepare. Exactly right. All right, outside right now, no fireworks in the sky for us today as we are expecting quiet conditions here in the weather department. As you get going on uh, this Wednesday morning, temperatures are currently in the 50s and 60s with partly cloudy skies. Any clouds that are out there right now will burn off pretty quickly uh, here this morning once the sun gets up over the horizon and by 8 a.m. up to 66 degrees already. And you can see there's just a little bit in the way of cloud cover off to our east and some of those clouds are just going to spill in at times throughout the day today. So the further east you are today, instead of mostly sunny, it's probably partly cloudy. It's still a very nice day uh, with no threat of any rainfall. And here are your high temperatures going up into the mid 80s to upper 80s in some locations. So it's a tick warmer today, but it's still dry with all the sunshine. It's still dry tomorrow and for the most part on Saturday as well. There could be a stray storm late Saturday, but the daytime hours are dry. But Monday and or Sunday and Monday, that is when uh, the storm chances really start to ramp up. We'll talk more about that for you coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you. President Trump has signed an executive order aimed at addressing police brutality. And today, Senate Republicans will unveil their plan. Straight ahead, we're taking a look at what's in the GOP plan and why it's now getting some pushback. The time is 5-11. It's Wednesday morning. Stick around. We'll be right back. All new Thursday on ABC. Welcome back. It is 514. Today marks five years since the Charleston church shooting. Back on June 17th, 2015, Dylan Roof opened fire after sitting through a 45-minute Bible study at the Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Carolina. Nine people were killed and one other person was injured. Roof, a professed white supremacist, said that he targeted his victims because they were black. He was convicted of murder and hate crimes and sentenced to death. A documentary about the shooting titled Emmanuel is available to stream for free online. There's also an online panel discussion on racial injustice that can be viewed on the group We Can Stop the Silence. That's a Facebook page. Today, Senate Republicans will unveil their plan to address police brutality. The move comes just one day after the president signed an executive order on police reform. John Lawrence has the latest from Washington. Lawmakers from both parties agree now is the time to address the tension in the country over police misconduct, but they could be on a collision course. All communities are laser focused on a response from Washington. We should provide them with a blueprint of what it looks like to restore confidence in the most vulnerable areas of this country. Senator Tim Scott took the lead on the Republicans police reform bill. The 106 page proposal does not include a federal chokehold ban, but state and local governments won't be eligible for grants if they don't enact a ban, except in instances where lives are at risk. That's something that we find appropriate because it's certainly worse, certainly better than having the officer have to shoot someone. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer blasted Republicans for taking a narrow approach. Now is the moment for real, lasting, comprehensive change. We cannot merely make some changes around the margins. While Majority Leader Mitch McConnell dismissed the House's Democratic police reform proposal, saying it won't succeed in the Senate. As the partisan bickering and mass protests continue, Police officers keep suiting up for their jobs. Part of that whole de-escalation thing is when you arrive on scene is to look and listen. Most important skill or your, your tool is your brain and your communication skills. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Today, possible charges against the officers involved in the death of Rayshard Brooks are expected to be announced. Brooks was shot to death last week after falling asleep in a Wendy's drive through and then failing a field sobriety test. After a struggle with officers and taking one of their tasers, Brooks was shot in the back twice. Records show that Officer Garrett Wolf, who shot and killed Brooks, had 11 incidents that were reviewed before last week. Three of those resulted in disciplinary action. Records also show Wolf had received more than 2,000 hours of training. 
including the use of deadly force, firearms, de-escalation, and cultural awareness classes. The other officer had no disciplinary incidents on the record. The Trump administration is suing former National Security Advisor John Bolton over his forthcoming book. A lawsuit claims it's a breach of Bolton's non-disclosure agreements. The suit also claims the book, called The Room Where It Happened, is a risk to national security because it exposes classified information. The president has said he considers every conversation with him classified. And Attorney General Bill Barr has said he doesn't believe Bolton went through the proper clearance process. Legal experts believe it's unlikely a federal court would block a book before it has been released. The room where it happened is slated for release next week. At 517, SpaceX's very first Travagon crew astronauts have been on the International Space Station for several weeks now. On Tuesday, Rob Bankin and Doug Hurley gave their second live interview from space. The pair became the first astronauts to launch from American soil in nearly a decade and the first to do so in a private aircraft. In the 25 minute interview, Hurley and Bankin talked about what surprised them the most during the ride up. It really did surprise us how different the ride was and uh, but but it certainly was a great ride. It was just different, uh, very exciting and uh, totally uh, removed from our shuttle experience as far as what it felt like. So uh, all in all, I would say that was the, the first big highlight. And then the second one was, was getting to space station and uh, seeing three smiling faces when we came through the hatch. Bacon is also preparing to perform at least two spacewalks on next Friday, June 26, and another on July 1st. Bacon and Hurley are scheduled to return to Earth in August. Pretty cool to get an update on them. That's been kind of a highlight in everything going on the past few weeks. So, Todd, we do have another highlight in the weather department, and that is that it's continuing to stay pretty nice out. Yeah, you know, it's been a very dry stretch of weather, which I think most people probably won't complain about, but we actually do need a little bit of rainfall. We do have some in the forecast, but you're right, Lauren. We've been dealing with the sunshine and very comfortable mornings, just like we have this morning and the afternoons have been pretty pleasant for the most part, uh, but we are going to start to crank the heat up just a little bit. So the humidity remains low today, even though the temperatures are coming up. Uh, it's going to be a very comfortable with seasonable high temperatures in the mid 80s. Temperatures do though start to climb. And then we have no rain in this forecast until late Saturday, and that's just the chance of maybe an isolated thunderstorm. Better rain chances will arrive on Sunday, but we've only seen just over an inch of rain so far this month in Indianapolis. That puts us almost an inch and a quarter below where we should be this time of year. Now, I do know with some of the thunderstorms that we did see last week that some areas have picked up more rain, but those are the official numbers uh, from the National Weather Service here in Indianapolis. 57 in Bloomington and Bedford right now, 59 in Greenfield. Indy running a little bit warmer this morning at 66 degrees and then off to the east, Richmond and Connersville. Very nice at 58 degrees. Throughout the day today, temperatures will be climbing into the mid 80s, about 84 to 85 degrees will be your afternoon high and will already be to 80 by the noon hour. So it's a quick warm up and then we'll tack on a couple more degrees for those high temperatures later on this afternoon. 83 now is our high on average for this time of year. So we will be just a couple degrees above of that. As far as the clouds go, for those of you in eastern locations, you notice some of these clouds starting to make their way towards central Indiana. Uh, I think your skies will eventually go partly cloudy later on this afternoon. So the further west you are and the further north, skies will be completely sunny today. And then for some of you, as you see on TrueCast, as I advance it here into the afternoon hours for you, you notice just a little bit of cloud cover. Nothing really to worry about. No threat of any rainfall. Just want to point it out, though, uh, if you are going to be out and about. Temperatures over night tonight will be in the 60s. Tomorrow we're going to have highs up into the mid 80s with partly cloudy skies. So it's a little bit warmer tomorrow. And then as we progress into the weekend, this is when the heat arrives. Friday, potentially our first 90 degree day. 92 on Saturday with just a spot storm late in the day. And then as we work our way into Sunday, we're still at 89. The humidity will start to build as well. But I do think it's probably Sunday, Monday and Tuesday that we have better storm chances in this forecast, at least compared to Saturday. Even once those storms do arrive, though, they'll be scattered in nature. Uh, no day looks to be a complete washout, but until then, enjoy the next couple days with the low humidity that is sticking around. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take one more look here near the downtown area. I-65 and I-70 at the South Split. This is where we were monitoring a crash cleanup from the overnight hours in the right lane of northbound I-65 on the ramp system there at the split. It looks like everything is now clear. All lanes are back open. Great news for your morning drive. The 500 Festival is challenging you 
debut to compete in the first ever Indianapolis 500 mile virtual challenge. All you have to do is complete 500 miles of physical activity from running to walking, biking, swimming or wheelchair racing. The challenge starts Monday, June 22nd and goes through December 31st. You also have the option of taking part in a 100 mile challenge. All participants will log their miles online and those who compete will receive a shirt, medal and pin. You can register for $60 at IndyMini.com slash 500 miles. Well, the future is now. Boston Dynamics is selling its widely popular robot dog. We'll tell you how much this will cost you coming up. Vandalism of a Confederate gravesite at Crown Hill Cemetery is under investigation this morning. Ahead at 530, a look at some of the damage and what the Veterans Association is now saying about the incident. We'll be right back. or visit onehourheatandair.com. Want a dog without the pain of house training, feeding, or walking it? Well, look no further than Boston Dynamics robot dog Spot. You may have seen these captivating machines on social media, and now they're available for sale. Spot is quite athletic. It can run about 5.2 feet per second, climb stairs, and even open doors. It also has cameras for eyes that give it a 360 degree range of vision and can operate in temperatures ranging from negative four to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. But you can forget about getting adoption fees waived. Spot will cost you about $75,000. So I guess mm. maybe Jeff Bezos <laughs> is the only person that's gonna own a spot because if I had a cool 75K laying around, I would not be buying that. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, it's really <laughs> creepy. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's a, <laughs> that's a no go for me. You can go to the Humane <laughs> Society and get a great loving pet for a lot, lot cheaper uh, than that. And yeah, get a good you could home, buy multiple sure. dogs. You could buy for the that Humane much Society. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously. Uh. Heck, you could have a whole kennel if you wanted, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, good dog walking here this morning. If that's in uh, the plans for you and your favorite four-legged friend, as temperatures are very comfortable, the skies uh, just starting to brighten here on Wednesday morning. And as we work our way throughout the morning hours, you'll notice the temperatures will climb quickly out of the 60s to 70 degrees already by 9 a.m. The humidity is still very low here this morning. Uh, so it's a great morning to get out and about. Eventually highs this afternoon, they will be topping off in the mid 80s across the area, just a couple degrees above normal. And so while it's a little warmer than it was yesterday, yesterday we got up to 83, uh, it's still going to be fairly comfortable because the humidity virtually non-existent throughout the day today. The dew points are really, really low. So get out there and enjoy because some changes do arrive by the end of the week as we could see our first 90 degree temperature. We'll talk more about that extended forecast for you coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 527. Show today at 10 on RTV6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Gunfire in the Circle City kills at least two people and injures five others. Breaking out at 5.30, we are live this morning with the latest on the investigation. Plus, two Anderson police officers are on administrative leave this morning. The incident leaving one man considering legal action. But first, here at 5.30, we do want to welcome you into Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick, meteorologist Todd Clausen joining us from home this morning. And Todd, if people liked yesterday, we're going to have a lot of the same here for our midweek. Yeah, you know, pretty much there, Meredith. Maybe a degree or two warmer today, but you probably won't even notice that. Yesterday's high is 83. Today, my forecast is up to 85. But the big similarity is the lack of humidity that'll be around and then all the sunshine that we'll see as well. Here's a live look right now from downtown off towards the east. Actually, you're looking from IMS past downtown off towards the east as the skies are just starting to brighten. And in this easterly direction, you'll notice a little more in the way of cloud cover as we progress throughout the morning hours. And that'll kind of carry into the afternoon as well, and I'll show you why in just a second. But temperatures are in the 50s and 60s this morning, 57 in Bloomington, Bedford, Greencastle, and Richmond. 66 is the current temperature right now in Indy. But off to our east, there's the storm system that's bringing a lot of rainfall to the Carolinas, and it's trying to spin some clouds back in our direction. I do think some of those clouds will make it into eastern locations throughout the afternoon hours. So we'll go from mostly sunny this morning to partly cloudy later on this afternoon. But even if you do see a 
little more in the way of cloud cover. The good news is those clouds will not produce any rain. It's a completely dry day for everybody today across the area. That changes though as we get towards the tail end of the weekend. More on that coming up in just a little bit. Lauren. Todd, thank you. Let's take a look right now. Traffic as you're heading out on the roads on this Wednesday. This is I-70 and Shadeland Avenue. A view here on the east side at your commute. Everything's open and traveling up to speed. No major crashes or delays here on the east side to slow you down. A violent night in Indianapolis after two people were killed and four others hurt in multiple shootings across the city. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning from the scene of one of those shootings. Kelsey, when we spoke with you last, police were still there on scene despite this happening hours ago. Yeah, Meredith, that's right. And they're still here, but things are definitely slowing down a little bit. So we're at the scene of all those shootings that happened tonight. This is the one that was deadly. So officers, when they arrived on scene here on Bolton Avenue, just off of 46th in Arley, Arlington, they found two people shot and dead inside of a car. They say the two men were shot inside that car around 1.20 this morning. They also found a blood trail and believe a third person was in that car. SWAT teams and K-9 units were out. And it looks like some of them are still out now looking for that third person. IMPD officers say Indianapolis is on track to have a record number of homicides in 2020. People obviously can't get along, so if we can't get along, let's just shoot each other because that seems to be the proper thing to do now uh, because we have zero sense of having any ability whatsoever to communicate and to deal with any anger issues um, other than taking a weapon out and, and pulling the trigger. On the northwest side, police say three people were shot at a party just before one. It happened at a home on Luxembourg Circle West near the I-65 38th Street interchange. A man and a woman were taken to the hospital in stable condition. And another victim, a man, was located at McDonald's on 38th Street. He is also in critical condition. Now, police are still trying to figure out what led up to that shooting. And in a separate shooting, another victim was to, uh, walked into the hospital in serious condition. And we just learned right before the 5 o'clock hour that officers Officers are on the scene of another shooting over on English Avenue. That person also in critical condition. Of course, if you know anything about these shootings that happened overnight, IMPD wants to hear from you. You can call anonymously at 317-262-TIPS. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you for that update. The time right now is 535, and two Anderson police officers are now on administrative leave after a man appeared to be placed in a chokehold during an arrest over the weekend. A portion of the incident was caught on video and it has been shared on social media. What the hey man, that's my son. According to police, 21-year-old Spencer Neese was being arrested for resisting law enforcement. Officers were originally in the area on reports of gunshots heard near Noble Street. Police say that's when Officer Brandon Reynolds saw Neese throwing something against the side of a warehouse. In the video, it appears that Officer Reynolds used a chokehold to pull him to the ground. Officer Ashley gravely assisted in the arrest. A few days earlier, the city of Anderson announced that police could no longer use chokeholds when making an arrest. After viewing the video, the city's mayor and police chief called the incident disturbing and that investigators are there's an investigation in progress rather niece tells rtv6 that he plans to take legal action against the department and wants to see both officers fired the vandalism of a confederate gravesite at crown hill cemetery is under investigation this morning we reached out to the veterans association about this picture you see here the va says the substances on these gravestones were described as tar and feathers a plaque seen on the stones calls this portion of the cemetery the Confederate Mound. According to Crown Hill's website, that's where 1,600 Confederate prisoners of war were buried after they died at Camp Morton. Crews have since cleaned up the mess, but the VA says they are working with law enforcement to identify the person responsible. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 outbreak in Indiana. The State Department of Health has confirmed 440 new cases and 14 new deaths. That brings the total number of cases to 40,786. More than 2,200 Hoosiers have died from the virus since the pandemic began. 363,000 people have been tested so far and 11.2% of those tests are coming back positive. The Red Cross is in urgent need of blood donations right now. Starting this week, your donation will be tested to see if you've been exposed to COVID-19. Our Alyssa Donovan joins us with those details. Whenever you donate blood, plasma, or platelets to the Red Cross, your donation is tested for certain infectious diseases and viruses. And now COVID-19 is part of that list. 
Adding COVID-19 to the list of tests is a way for the Red Cross to work with state and national health organizations to help better understand the spread of COVID-19. It's also a way for people in our community to learn if they've been exposed to the virus. The pandemic has caused blood supply to be up and down the past several months. Cancellations of blood drives caused blood supply to drop quickly. Initially, the lack of elective surgeries helped keep things balanced. But now that surgeries are back on and urgent cares are fully operating, that need has increased by 30% in just a few weeks. That's why the Red Cross is encouraging people to donate if they can, but only if donors are healthy. If you suspect you might have COVID-19, you know, that's something you should go to your doctor for, not, not the Red Cross. Within seven to 10 days, you'll have access to your antibody results via the donor app or online through your donor account. For details on where you can donate blood around the Indianapolis area, we have a full list on our website, theindychannel.com. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. More help is on the way for millions of people who are still out of work due to the pandemic. Some Hoosiers may be eligible for 13 additional weeks of unemployment starting on June 28th. The Indiana Department of Workforce Development made this announcement this week. It comes as some people continue to wait for their benefits. Nathan Taylor says he's laid off from his job as a truck driver. He and his girlfriend just moved into a new home and they're expecting a child. That means going 10 weeks without unemployment benefits has been especially difficult. It's give them a call two, three times a week. And when you actually give an employment call, you're not talking to unemployment. You're talking to a third party agency that ends up dealing with unemployment through emails, getting in contact with DWD. They call me back the next day just to say, we'll give you a call again the, the, the following day. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. RTV6 reached out to the Department of Workforce Development on Nathan's behalf and officers or officials there told us that some claims require a closer look and that can take longer than 21 days. The time right now is 539. Let's check in with Todd Clausen and see what we can expect in today's forecast. Hey, TK. Lauren, good morning to you. It's another good morning for us here all across central Indiana as we're dealing with low humidity, comfortable temperatures, and the sun just now starting to rise. Official sun uh, rise is not until 617, uh, but we're going to see our skies start to brighten pretty quickly here this morning, and we'll stay in the mid-60s here through 7 a.m., and then the temperatures are going to warm pretty quickly. In fact, already close to 80 degrees already by the time we get to 11 a.m., and then we're going to carry those warm temperatures into the afternoon, so it will be uh, great for the pool. High temperatures going all the way up to 85 degrees today. You will notice, I think, a little more in the way of cloud cover uh, this afternoon compared to what we've seen the past few days. But the past few days, we've hardly had any clouds. So we'll just call it partly cloudy this afternoon. No threat of any rainfall. But make sure you have that sunscreen on. UV index about as high as it can go. That means burn time is only about 10 to 15 minutes. Drink plenty of water as well. The temperatures, well, they, they will continue to climb here in the coming days. Near 90 by Friday, more on the extended forecast in just a little bit. Todd, thank you. As the country continues to reopen, more states are seeing a spike in COVID-19 cases. After the break, where some doctors are concerned about the number of hospitalizations. We'll be right back. New Twix, cookies and cream. Welcome back. A new coronavirus projection from the University of Washington forecasts as many as 200,000 deaths from the virus in the U.S. by October. But today, the vice president is praising President Trump's leadership in the pandemic and downplaying any alarm. ABC's Alex Proche has more from Washington. This morning, Vice President Pence is downplaying new coronavirus concerns. In an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal titled, There Isn't a Coronavirus Second Wave, Pence writes, we are winning the fight against the invisible enemy, adding such panic is overblown. But many health professionals, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, warn the country risk a resurgence in COVID cases if states don't stay vigilant as they reopen. And while the vice president says there is no second wave, cases of the virus are on the rise in at least 20 states, like Florida. Just one day after Miami pressed pause on its reopening plan, the state reported nearly 3,000 new cases Tuesday, the largest single-day spike since the beginning of the pandemic. 
Governor DeSantis says the state will not shut down again and attributes the spike to increased testing. We really expanded the drive through and the walk up sites and now we have pop up sites at retail locations and, and that's thousands and thousands and thousands of tests a day. COVID-19 hospitalizations are up in at least 14 states, including record highs in Arizona, North Carolina and Texas. There, Governor Greg Abbott insists the state can handle the uptick in patients, but urges younger people to stick to the safety guidelines. There are certain counties uh, where a majority of the people who are tested positive in that county are under the age of 30. And this typically results from people going to bar type settings. There's also new hope for a coronavirus treatment. Doctors at Oxford University say they found the first drug that improves survival rates in the sickest patients. A low-cost common steroid cut the risk of death by one-third for patients on ventilators and reduced deaths by 20% for those on oxygen. That steroid is called dexamethasone, and if in fact it can be used, another benefit is its cost. Doctors say it can treat a patient for just a dollar a day. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Once a COVID-19 vaccine is approved, the Trump administration says it expects health insurers to cover the cost for people. That means no co-pays or other charges. Currently, insurers cover vaccines recommended by the CDC under the Affordable Care Act, but the Trump administration has been working to overturn that. The vaccine isn't expected to be available to patients until next year. We are seeing a lot of new products coming out related to keeping us safe in public spaces. We've shown you devices like this, the Beach Ring, which promotes social distancing. And then another company called Cad Crowd recently held a design contest to come up with more products like that. So far, all of the designs submitted can be 3D printed. The no touch door handles, the no touch cupboard openers, the no touch uh, foot operated door openers, the no touch, uh, we kind of innovated a design for Uber door handles so you could open it with your elbow or your forearm as opposed to touching it with your hand. Well, the first place prize went to the hook ring, which can be used to grab, push, and pull things so you don't have to touch them with your hands. There's also a device that you can put around your hand to push buttons. Because the designs are open source, people can make them themselves with a 3D printer. You can find the designs on the CAD Crowd website. Right now, it is Wednesday. Want to get a check of our forecast midway through the week. And for that, let's go over to Todd Clausen. Yeah, Lauren, it's been a great week weather-wise. If you're a fan of just typical summer-like weather, our temperatures have been very seasonable. We've had the sunshine. We've had a pretty long stretch here of dry days, and that's going to continue at least for the next few. Here's a live look outside uh, right now on the RTV6 Weather Now camera network as you're looking from the top of Salesforce Tower to the north, and you see mostly sunny skies, just a few fair weather clouds out there uh, way off in the distance, and temperatures here this morning very, very comfortable once again. It's been great sleeping weather during the overnight hours, and we've fallen back down to 57 right now in Bloomington. It's 66 in Indianapolis, 61 is the current temperature currently in Muncie. And there's some 50s out there from Greensburg to Bedford to Spencer at 57 degrees in Columbus. You're at 59 uh, this morning. A beautiful day for everybody down in Bloomington as you look uh, through the, the gates down Kirkwood Avenue. Uh, if you're going to be in Bloomington or anywhere in central Indiana, you're going to enjoy mostly sunny skies to start turning Partly cloudy in the, the afternoon hours. Everybody deals with low humidity throughout the day today. Fairly light winds and high temperatures will be topping off in the mid 80s all across the area. So get out there and enjoy the satellite radar picture is quiet. That little green that you see there near Tipton, uh, that is just some false returns. There's no rain out there uh, this morning. But as we expand down, you do notice that there is a storm system off to our east with some rain now moving into West Virginia and the clouds extending into Ohio and getting pretty close close to the Cincinnati area. Well, these clouds are going to continue to kind of back in towards central Indiana from east to west, a little different than we normally see. Uh, but with the counterclockwise flow and that storm system off to the east, that's what's going to happen throughout the day today. So as we work our way throughout the day on TrueCast, you'll see we go from mostly sunny to eventually uh, partly cloudy across uh, the area. And then as we continue into the overnight hours, the clouds will kind of fade away. So it should be a decent evening with partly cloudy skies 
highs. Temperatures still in the 80s through 9 p.m., then falling off to about 77 degrees by 10 p.m. And then throughout the overnight hours, temperatures will be in the 60s, so running a little bit warmer come tomorrow morning than what we've seen the past few mornings, but still very, very comfortable. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, high temperatures going a few degrees warmer into the mid 80s. And then as we continue into Friday in the weekend, this is when the heat arrives. We had zero 90 degree days so far this year. Normally in a given year, we see about 17 or 18. So we're running a little bit behind schedule. I don't think too many people are going to complain about that though. But Friday and then definitely Saturday are the first two good opportunities to get to those numbers. As far as rain, spot storm late Saturday, better storm chances Sunday and Monday. Lauren. Todd, thank you. It is farm to table dining and the dining room sits right above the farm. After the break, a fresh take on country cooking and ice cream that comes from the cows that live right next door. We'll be right back. Easy, even Petey can do it. There's been a lot of talk about eating local recently, along with plenty of great restaurants. The Indy area also has lots of places growing great food. Yeah, a day on the farm and a four-star meal to go with it sounds pretty good. And perhaps a little fresh ice cream under the sun. Our Brad Brown got a closer look. It's a country oasis in the far northwest corner of Marion County. And all over the Traders Point Creamery property, you can find a taste of the farm. We are better as a destination place and a real um, entity of Indianapolis and central Indiana. And we think we have a more powerful voice when we talk about local food and, our, and you know, being in Indiana. The Loft Restaurant is the main room in the Traders Point Complex. They went through a full renovation and remodel during the COVID-19 shutdown. March, April that are a little bit slow as we prepare for busy summer and busy fall. So this hit in, what, March, and it kind of just rattled everything. And uh, we had to really reinvent, pivot, you know, just to survive. A country chic space serves up a gourmet menu to match that look. Outdoor dining with screened in patio spaces and a third floor sun deck quickly became their most popular tables. People come in, okay, they've been cooped up in their houses. They've been told not to socialize or do anything, but then they say, outside is good. So they've been coming to our trail in record numbers and just walking around the farm and just exploring it. So I think we're getting a lot of first time visitors. You can't have a creamery without a dairy bar. Trader's Point's menu of milkshakes, Sundays, floats and more are the real deal. Served up just feet away from the cows that make that milk. That's exactly our marketing right now is hey, while the restaurant is at 50% capacity or, you know, a week ago, we couldn't even be inside. Come and join us for an ice cream cone and then walk around. Everybody seems a little more friendly, too. They're, they're happy to be back. We're happy to have them. And so, you know, it's just, you know, not now our challenge is, hey, how do we keep this momentum going and, you know, make sure that their one evening out after being cooped up so long is really, really special. Working for you on the northwest side, Brad Brown, RTV6. Traders Point has several indoor and outdoor spaces for weddings, receptions, parties, and more. The Loft Restaurant and Dairy Bar are open Tuesday through Sunday. The retail farm store is open every day. Carry out and curbside takeout options are still available as well. And Todd, if anyone's headed out for an ice cream treat this Wednesday, they're going to want <laughs> to eat it fast. All right. Yeah, eat it quick. You know, mid 80s later on this afternoon, it's going to melt really, really quick. And then if it melts, then, you know, you just have to go back for a second ice cream cone, maybe. But uh, you're exactly right because it is going to be a warm day for us later on today. As we get above normal, right now we're sitting in the 50s and 60s. So it's very comfortable to start our day. Right at 65 and Indy 58 in Bloomington, as well as Zionsville, you see all the sunshine to the north. We're on our way up to a high of 85 degrees uh, later on this afternoon with mostly sunny skies. But the humidity, even though the temperature is a little warmer than it was yesterday. Yesterday we were at 83. Just because the temperature comes up doesn't mean the humidity does. It's still going to be very, very comfortable out there with a light wind. So get out there and enjoy. The 90s, though, are in our seven-day planning forecast. We'll talk more about that coming up in the 6 o'clock hour. Todd, thank you. Only on RTV6, newly released surveillance video in connection to the shooting death of Dre John Reed. What his legal team is saying about this case and the new video, the exclusive story, all new at 6 a.m. Stay with us.